I gave you one last chance to memorize your Apostles' Creed. I was watching you. Some of you kind of mumbled it. I was looking at you, Nathan Davis especially. I was kind of tracking you, buddy. And, and I told all of our young people, I said, you know, uh, the beautiful thing is with, uh, sometimes we have them like sit in the first couple of rows. We have such a big class this year that uh, we uh, thought we'd better put them up here. So that you can pay attention to see if they're paying attention, you know? And, and, and then I told them, I gave them the real kind of curveball. I said, you all are on tape forever and ever. This is being recorded. And uh, you can go back and kind of check it out on the online uh, kind of thing. But uh, certainly, uh, we are here to celebrate with uh, all 34 of you. It's been a remarkable uh, class. And I'm going to take a, a little break. We've been working on a series on the fruit of the Spirit. And uh, where we're talking about those particular fruits in our church, love, joy, peace, patience, etc., um, but I thought it would be important to really take a moment to truly celebrate uh, with uh, these young people as uh, they make this particular, I think, major, most important commitment of their lives uh, about what they stand for, what they believe, what they value, how they're going to allow uh, Jesus uh, to be uh, their Lord. And uh, certainly... Uh, Maybe if you're new to our congregation and you have no clue of what confirmation's all about, I might take a moment just to kind of review a little bit about what it has entailed. You know, it was eight months ago, starting in September, we met every Wednesday night for an hour and a half, worship, discussion on the faith, on some of the core concepts and thoughts about what we believe. Uh, about who God is creator, uh, Jesus as our Savior and Lord, uh, our Holy Spirit, uh, and how he sustains us. We talked about, uh, just a little review, uh, discussions as far as uh, what we believe about the Bible and a little bit about our church and how it came to be and how it continues to be, the body of Christ living in the world. But, you know, it, it's more really than just um, discussions about what we believe, we hope to engage you at a variety of ways by uh, having the opportunity to experience worship in different venues. Uh, you had a chance to take a, a Friday night to go and, and see how some of your uh, Jewish friends uh, go through a Shabbat service on a, a Jewish service. We had the chance to go to a Roman Catholic Mass and, and what that entailed. And then last week, wasn't it fun uh, going to the Arlington Church of God, uh, Pentecostal congregation up in Akron, predominantly African-American, and I think talked to several of you and how much energy and joy and how much fun, that was the refrain, the refrain I kept getting, how much fun it was. And, and that's certainly, I think, uh, why we do those kind of things, to experience kind of the breadth uh, of why we worship. Uh, but we did more than that. It's more than just kind of worship, more than uh, just kind of talking about our faith. We also try to engage you in different kind of mission opportunities, whether that might be going down on a Saturday night to serve at the Calvary Mission, like you all did, uh, whether that might entail uh, helping out with your mentors and some of the projects you did with them. Uh, I had you journal through uh, the Gospel of Matthew. I did all that. And... Uh, then we went on those retreats. You know, we did that fall retreat uh, where you had a chance to kind of make some new friends, new connections. We got uh, six different schools, uh, six, seven, seven, seven different schools represented in this particular class. And so we thought it was important that you had that opportunity to kind of get bonded and begin to develop some kind of teamwork. Uh, talked at, even at that early retreat uh, about how the uh, secrets of life are about teamwork and balance, right? And uh, then we had a chance just this weekend to get away and to um, uh, go through uh, that uh, confirmation retreat. And so all in total, uh, you've spent a lot of hours uh, over the last, since September, uh, exploring what the, the faith of Jesus Christ is about. And there's certainly a cost that is involved in uh, really following Jesus. 
Uh, in fact, uh, Jesus kind of makes it fairly clear. This is found in Matthew's Gospel, uh, Matthew chapter 16. If you want to follow along in your pew Bibles to congregation, we're on page 1165. I don't think we have pew Bibles up in the choir loft. Um, but here it goes, just a few verses. Jesus said to his disciples, if you want to, fo- to be my followers, you got to forget about yourself and you got to take up your cross and follow me for if you want to save your life you will destroy it but if you give your life to me you will find it what will you gain if you own the whole world but you destroy yourself what will you give to get back your soul this is god's word you know the the choir anthem really sang that beautifully deny yourself take up your cross follow me let's pray Lord, uh, I just pray that the words of my mouth, the meditations of all of our hearts today, that the power of your Holy Spirit will be active and moving as these young people make a decision that I think is eternal and that is indeed priceless. And uh, now I ask that you be with them. And, we'll, and all these things we pray in the name of Jesus, our Lord. Amen. Um, th- this is a time of year. Uh, especially for our high school juniors and seniors, and some of you might have uh, siblings that kind of fit into that particular uh, category, where uh, they spend a lot of energy and a lot of expense on prom. They talk a lot about prom this time of the year. And uh, I was talking to my, uh, my youngest daughter, and she used a word that I was completely unfamiliar with. Maybe you've heard of it. I'm kind of clueless. Um, I'm, I'm not up with it, so to speak. But she said, uh, she said in casual conversation about a promposal. And I looked at her and I said, "What's a promposal?" And they, she looked at me and said, "Dad, that's how you kind of ask another person to go to prom with you." Well. Evidently, uh, that this is kind of the newest fad that a more outrageous, more outlandish promposal, then that generates the most attention. I mean, people with their cell phones, they capture the moment of the promposal uh, when the uh, person musters up the courage. I was listening to some of them. Some of the promposals, they hire singing groups to go and serenade the, the person you want to ask to prom. Some, you, you go to a sporting event, and up on the jumbotron, they say, you know, to the person you want to propose to, to go to prom with, you know, will you go with me to prom? Big deal, a jumbotron. Uh, there was this one, I was reading about this one young woman who wanted to ask uh, a young man to prom, and so she went out and purchased uh, his favorite pair of wrestling shoes. Must be a wrestler. And she put a note on it. Uh, I want you to wrestle my heart away at prom. <laughs> I think the cheesier the better. And the more outlandish, uh, the one that generates the most, quote, hits on uh, uh, social media. Well, uh, there was a report that just released, it just came out on Tuesday, from Visa International, Visa, the credit card processing company. They did a survey of over 3,000 high school uh, seniors and uh, kind of calculate the cost of promposals, okay? And uh, the figure that they came, I mean, this was like a softball for a pastor. I mean, it couldn't have gotten any better. For this. It just came out. And uh, they, they said that uh, the uh, average cost of promposals was, hold on to your seats, parents. This is going to be your kid in a few years. $324 just to ask. Now, at the risk of feeling really old and rather old-fashioned, I have a very distinct image of uh, calling up my girlfriend uh, back in 1983 and on the phone, on a landline. You don't even know what a landline is. (laughs) 
I didn't text. I didn't even know what texting was. We had to get on a landline. You had to kind of rehearse what you were going to say about 50 times in your head. And finally, you call her up and ask her to go to prom. No, 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 no. Much too boring. But, you know, they were talking about how, you know, this $300 price uh, for uh, promposals, but that it kind of um, pales into the overall cost of prom. Uh, in America today, $919. So let's count the cost of prom, can we? Okay, let's start off. You know, ladies, you get a nice dress, maybe Macy's, something like that. About the $300, $350 range, cha-ching. Then, you guys, you think you're out of the woods? No, 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 no. Uh, you got to go to the tuck shop, you get the nice shoes, about maybe 120, 140, somewhere in that range. Uh, then, you know, you, you kind of arrange for a nice dinner at a, a nice restaurant, like at the Twisted Olive or something like that. And, you know, you're looking at about 75 bucks for a couple. If you go in with a bunch of your buddies, you kind of get a limo. Yeah, you kind of pool your resources. You fork it out. Uh, even pooling it, about 150 bucks uh, for that particular evening. Cha-ching. Uh, there's the... Uh, 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 photos at the prom. You know, you got to put it out about 40 bucks for that. Uh, there's the little corsages or the boutonnieres that you, you have to invest on. You know, you're looking about 45, 50 bucks or so there. Cha -cha. You see how I'm kind of adding up the cost of prom. Uh, I'm not even at to the tickets of the event actual dance. You're probably like around the, I mean, uh, if you have dinner there or don't have dinner, you're looking at 60 bucks. If you don't have dinner there, uh, cha-ching, keeps you adding up. And you ladies, of course, you got to look nice. You have your hair, your nails. Pastor Brian doesn't have to worry about his hair. Uh, even when I had a full head of hair like Tyler there, I still didn't go and, and have my hair done professionally. You're talking probably, what, $65 for a nice hair and your nails done. Cha-ching! It all rolls up. You add it all up and you end to a, um, you know, all the costs together kind of equals a perfect evening out for an 18-year-old and a uh, really uh, putting it on mom and dad's MasterCard? <laughs> Priceless! <laughs> I want to talk a little bit today about the cost of confirmation. Yeah, you know, um, way back in September, uh, I, I had you uh, kind of uh, get your binders, and, and there was, we, we kind of put together that binders, and we, we put together a little journal for you to kind of look through um, uh, uh, Mark's gospel. We had that opportunity to go on a couple retreats and pay for that. Uh, and uh, the robes, the nice robes that you're wearing today, your, your robes. Uh, we added it all up, and we kind of presented a total, and we said, uh, you know, it's about $90 for confirmation. And we ask your parents to contribute that uh, as part of this journey. But if they didn't even have the funds then, it was okay, we'd kind of absorb it. But you know, the cost to you was a little bit more than that because you had to sit there every Wednesday night. <laughs> Come and listen to Pastor Brian or Dan or Allison kind of, kind of talk about the, the issues of our faith. And you had to kind of go through that. And that cost you something there. I, I mean, certainly it did cost you something when we were ready to go to uh, the Jewish service. It was on a Friday night. And maybe it was the time when you had a ski trip arranged. And you had to kind of give up your ski trip in order to go to the Jewish service. It cost you something. Certainly, uh, there was a cost involved, like uh, on the retreats, uh, that, you know, I know some of you missed a lacrosse game. Uh, some of you missed a track meet. Some of you missed maybe cheerleading tryouts. Uh, that, that was a cost that you kind of weighed down. And that all of this kind of then adds up now to this point of Pastor Brian droning on and on, even yet today, <laughs> about 
the idea that if you want to follow Jesus, you have to be willing to deny yourself, to take up your cross, and to follow, follow the Savior. Now, you know, uh, Jesus really makes that pretty abundantly clear. Uh, In Matthew chapter 16, he kind of lays out, what does it mean if you want to follow me? Now, up until this time, uh, Jesus has been healing people. Jesus has been uh, casting out demons. Jesus has been uh, feeding the 5,000 with the loaves and fish. He's been doing all these miraculous things, and the people are just attracted to him. They they, want to know. And so Jesus, uh, kind of this hinge point in the story, he takes the disciples away. And he asked them, who do the people say that I am? And they kind of go, I don't know. I don't know. Kind of like when you have, I have a blank stare at me, like, oh, I don't know. And then finally, one of them raised their hands. And, and somebody said, well, some say John the Baptist. And then somebody else said, well, some say Elijah the prophet. And then Jesus said, who do you say that I am? And finally, the bravest one of the class, that was Peter, we don't have a Peter in this class, but Peter in Jesus' class raised his hand and said, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. And that's the whole hinge in Matthew's gospel. After, 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 after that point about what Peter says he believes and what Jesus is all about, then Jesus then talks not about kind of getting more popular. He talks about the idea you gotta be willing then to deny yourself, to take up your cross, and to follow me. And so here's Pastor Brian. You might be thinking, hey, I'm finally done. And what have I been telling you? Confirmation is not? Confirmation is? Confirmation is an inauguration, right? And here's Pastor Brian saying, man, it's going to cost. And you're squirming your seats, and you're like, man, I thought this was going to be a nice day. You know, I got these, all these people who love me, and I'm going to get some cake here in a couple minutes, and, and uh, maybe grandma's going to, you know, give me a nice little gift card, and, and, and you'll get some pictures taken. And, and here, Pastor Brian's droning on and on and on about the cost of following Jesus. And, and certainly, I don't want to kind of gloss that over. Because, you know, when you follow Jesus as Lord, remember? We went over and over. I droned into your heads that what does it mean to say Jesus is Lord? It's one thing to have him be to save you. But when you're asking Jesus to be your Lord, you're making that decision to follow him, to allow Jesus to begin to set your agenda, begin to Jesus to set your priorities. That means things like you got to learn to practice forgiveness. Things about practicing generosity. Things about caring for the least and for the lost. There's a cost involved with that. It means standing up when everybody else kind of wants to stray away from God and and you will make that decision that I'm going to worship. I'm going to serve. I'm going to give. And when everybody else says, that's not the popular thing to do. But friends, what I want you to hear is that that cost is so amazingly worth it. Rob Bell, he puts it this way. You know, most messages we receive are about how we make life easier. That's what the world's all about, about making your life easier. The call of Jesus goes in the exact opposite direction. It's not about making your life easier. It's really about making your lives more difficult. Wow, you sure you want to do this now? (laughs) I'm going to ask you to make your lives more difficult because it's it's going out of the way to be more generous, to be more disciplined, to be more free. It's refusing to escape and to become numb and to check out of this broken, fractured world. That's the cost of confirmation. But, But I'm also here to announce that anything of value, has a great cost. 
You know, and frankly, most of the things that the world values are pretty trivial in nature. And they do. They ask you to do things. They want you to invest in their sports. They want you to invest in, in their hobbies. They want you to do all those things. And those are not bad things. Don't get me wrong. But honestly, in the grand scope of what is important in the world, they're frankly pretty trivial. And they're asking you to invest in those things. And here I am asking you to invest in something that is not a Saturday night out on the town. I'm not asking you to invest even for a season in a sport. I'm asking you to invest in a lifetime, a lifetime of service, of sacrifice, and of following this revolutionary way we call the Jesus way. And I believe it's an investment that is valuable, important, and is so extraordinarily special because it's not, it's not just an investment for a day. It's an investment for eternity. It's an investment for an abundant life right here, right now. And certainly, I think uh, this is a world which needs that kind of call. Because, uh, you know, we're going, you're going to have challenges, you're going to have struggles, you're going to come to the end of your rope, you're going to be frustrated and angry, and what you need to know is that when you allow Jesus to be your Lord, you'll always have somebody at your side, somebody who will hold you tight, somebody who will help you through the valleys of the shadows of death. And that, I think, is an investment that you're making today it is worth every single cost. San Stanley Hauerwas, he puts it like this. You know, God has never promised us safety. Instead, God promises participation in an adventure called the kingdom. This seems to me to be great good news in a world that is literally dying of boredom. And so, let's sum it all up. End of the day, the cost of confirmation. Uh, that includes that idea of standing right up here in front of God, in front of all these important people of your life, and you're going to make promises. And frankly, that price is pretty scary. Should be. Should be. Uh, what's the other cost? Certainly, you're getting up and you're going to say you're going to give of your time, you're going to give of your talents. You're going to give of your treasures. Yes, that's costly. And certainly, then you're going to sit there and be in agreement that you're going to be a part of this body of believers. Uh, and, uh, you know, we talk about it's not about believing, it's about belonging. And so you're going to join with all these strange people out here. And I know some of them. And they're pretty strange, okay? And, and, and that's really, that's pretty weird, isn't it? I mean, scary, it's costly, and it's weird. <laughs> but at the end result, what do you get in return for that investment? You get an eternal life, and you get an abundant life. And to all of you, that is priceless. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, I ask that you pour down your Holy Spirit upon us today. This moment, and as these young people kneel, kneel before you, kneel in front of all of us, that uh, they will feel a very deep sense in their heart that they have made the most important decision of their lives. A decision that uh, indeed is costly but a decision that is also priceless. A decision that lasts for eternity and it's abundant life right now. We ask for these gifts, O Savior, Lord, friend, and healer. Amen. All right. Are we ready for our confirmation? I'm sorry? Go to your spots. That's what she told me. I just follow Kara.
You try to orchestrate 34 people, mentors, parents. Kara's a master at this. She really is. Gets this all coordinated and uh, established for this particular ritual. Okay. Wow. We got a full house here, Kara. How do we squeeze everybody in here? They're not breathing. They're not breathing. It won't be too much longer. Okay. Brothers and sisters in Christ, through the sacrament of baptism, we are initiated into Christ's holy church. We are incorporated into God's mighty acts of salvation. We're given a new birth through water and by the Spirit. All this is God's gift offered to us without price. So, through confirmation and the reaffirmation of faith, Declare at your baptism, acknowledge that God is doing to us as we f- confirm our commitment to Christ's holy church. Miss Monica, can you present our confirmation class? As a member of Church of the Lakes, it is my privilege to present these candidates for Christian baptism and for our membership into our church family. Great. All of you, you, we've asked you to fill out your commitment covenants, which refer to your time, your talent, your treasures. And I'm going to ask you now vows. Remember we used vows as sacred promise? Uh, you don't make sacred promises very often. This is a big deal. I'm going to ask you uh, these questions. First of all, on behalf of the whole church, will you renounce the spiritual force of wickedness to reject the evil power of this world? Do you repent of your sin? Do you accept the freedom and power God gives you to resist evil, injustice, and oppression in whatever forms they present themselves, if so, would each of you say, I do? I didn't hear you. There you go. That's a little better. Okay. Uh, The most important question I think you'll ever be uh, asked and that you will ever answer is this. Do you confess Jesus Christ as your Savior? Do you put your whole trust in his grace? Do you promise to serve him as your Lord? In union with the church, which Christ is open to people of all ages, of all nations, and of all races. If so, would you all say, I do? I do. Let's try that again. <laughs> Will you all say, I do? I do. Very good. Great. Thank you. Okay. And then finally, according to the grace given to you, will you remain faithful uh, members of Christ's holy church? and serve as Christ's representatives in this world. If so, would you say, I will? I will. Great. Now, uh, in front of everybody who's staring at you, including the internet, uh, you will have the opportunity to share that which you believe by reciting the Apostles' Creed. And so, I'll have you start, then I will drop (laughs) out, and you will go on, okay? I believe... Was that a little frightening? Yeah, I was watching you. Thank, thankfully, Ashley kind of helped you through the rough spot there. You can always count on one to kind of help you out there. Okay, now uh, we are going to have the opportunity to celebrate uh, the baptism of uh, four of our young people. So, we first of all, and I failed to do this, I want to... Um, have a prayer. I'm going to do one prayer for the gift of water, and then I'll start with Alyssa, and then all of you. So this will be the prayer for the waters of baptism. Our Heavenly and Holy Father, we give you thanks for this amazing gift, this life-nourishing water. And Lord, as these young people feel the water upon their head, and, and we hear uh, their response of their vows, that all of us will be reminded of the power of your Spirit that cleanses us, that uh, helps us grow, 
and is a sign of the new birth in the faith of Jesus Christ. We ask these things in the name of our Savior, Jesus. Amen. Okay, Miss Alyssa, is it your desire to be baptized in the faith of Jesus? Yeah. All right. Okay. Okay. Alyssa Lee Bell, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Have you go back, and we're going to get you confirmed in just a moment. Okay, we got Callie. We got my redheads today. Yeah. Miss Callie. And Callie, is it your desire to be baptized in the faith of our Lord Jesus Christ? Okay, great. Callie Leanne Hammond, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Chase, yeah, are we coming up here? I warn the young people, I don't dry clean. <laughs> Chase, is it your desire to be baptized in the faith of our Lord Jesus Christ? Yes. Okay, great. Jason Edward LaCourt, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Congratulations, buddy. Great. <laughs> it's beautiful. Thank you. Okay. And Ben. What's Ben's middle name? Finally, Ben, is it your desire, young man, to be baptized in the faith of our Lord Jesus Christ? Yes. Great. Okay. Stand up a little bit here. Benjamin Mitchell Westfall, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Congratulations, buddy. Great. All right. Okay. Now, um, we are going to have you come forward to be confirmed. In, uh, in what confirmation is, just kind of a reminder to all our parents and everybody else, that's where we lay our hands on them. Their parents made pledges, many of them when they were youngsters or infants, uh, that they would bring them up in the life of the church and uh, where they would guide them to accept God's grace for themselves. Now it's the, the time for the young person to own it, to make it firm, the promise made for them, and they, that's why it's called confirmation. Make it affirm, and that's what these young people are going to be doing. They're going to be kneeling. Uh, we're going to invoke the Holy Spirit through a prayer. We're going to have hands laid upon them, and uh, ask all of you. Uh, that's why we've given you the little guide. Uh, we've got the picture up on the screen that uh, you can also be in prayer for these young people as they make these commitments. Okay, Miss Ashley. Oh, and the young people are also bringing up their commitment covenants uh, that they're presenting onto the altar. Uh, in addition to their parents, their mentors, and our lay leader, Monica and Kara, and I will be that. So, okay. Uh, dear Ashley Joy Barnett, may the Holy Spirit work within you that having been born of water, and of the Spirit, that you will remain a faithful disciple of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. All right, thank you. Now that your hair is all nice and wet. Huh? Okay. Alyssa Lee. Bell. May the Holy Spirit work within you at having been born of water and now of the Spirit, that you will remain a faithful disciple of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Congratulations.
Delaney Rose Pierce Boggs. May the Holy Spirit work within you that having been born of water and nurtured in the Spirit, that you will remain a faithful disciple of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Elizabeth Burkhardt, may the Holy Spirit work within you that having been born of water and of the power of the Spirit, that you will remain a faithful disciple of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Congratulations. Emily Ann Clemson. May the Holy Spirit work within your life that having been born of water and of the power of the Spirit, that you will remain a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. Amen. Congratulations, Emily. Mm. Nathan Davis. May the power of the Holy Spirit work within you, that having been born of water and the Spirit, that you will remain a faithful disciple and follower of Jesus Christ. Amen. Drew James Fike. May the Holy Spirit work within you that having been born of water and of the presence of the Spirit, that you will remain a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. Amen. Congratulations, Drew. Keely, Samantha, Fightmaster. May the Holy Spirit work within you that having been born of water and the presence of the Spirit, that you will remain a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. Amen. John Mark Fowler. May the Holy Spirit work powerfully within you, that having been born of water and of the Spirit, that you will remain a faithful disciple of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Avery Elise Friels. May the Holy Spirit work powerfully within you that having been born of water and of the Spirit, that you will remain a faithful disciple of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Congratulations, Avery. Hmm. Callie Leanne Hammond. May the Holy Spirit work within you that having been born of water, born of the power of the Spirit, that you will remain a faithful disciple 
of Jesus Christ. Amen. Congratulations, dear. Cole James Harris. May the Holy Spirit work within you that having been born of water and the power and presence of the Spirit, that you will remain a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. Amen. Congratulations, Cole. Uh, Ian Thomas Hawkins. May the Holy Spirit work powerfully within you that having been born of water and of the Holy Spirit, that you will remain a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. Amen. Congratulations, buddy. Tyler Hopfensberger. May the Holy Spirit work mightily within you that having been born of water and of the presence of the Spirit, that you will remain a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen, buddy. Michaela Marie Huffman. May the Holy Spirit work mightily within your life that having been born of water and the presence of this Spirit, that you will remain a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. Uh, Jake Richard Johnston. May the Holy Spirit work mightily within you that having been born of water, having uh, been born of the power of the Spirit, that you will remain a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. Amen. Congratulations, buddy. Gracie Margaret Kelly. May the Holy Spirit work mightily within you that having been born of water and the presence of the Spirit, that you will remain true as a disciple of Jesus Christ. Amen. Congratulations, Gracie. <laughs> Adam, Mark, Kelly. May the Holy Spirit work mightily in your life that having been born of water and have been born of the presence of the Spirit, that you will remain a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. Amen. Congratulations, buddy. <laughs> Ashley Nicole Noak. May the Holy Spirit work mightily within you, that having been born of water and the presence of the Spirit, that you will remain a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. Amen. Congratulations, young lady. You don't have to go too far, do you? And you won't have to go far again, will you? Uh, Justin. Justin Allen Noak. May the Holy Spirit work within you that having been born of water and the power of your spirit, that you will remain a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. 
Amen. Congratulations, buddy. Yeah. All right. Kinsey Marie Noak. May the Holy Spirit work within you that having been born of water and the presence of your spirit, that you, Kinsey, will remain a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. Amen. Jason Edward LaCord. May the Holy Spirit move mightily in your life that having been born of water and the power of the Spirit, that you will remain true, a true disciple of Jesus Christ. Amen. Congratulations, buddy. Logan Brady Martins. May the Holy Spirit move within your life that as you have been born of the water of baptism, nurtured by the presence of the Spirit, that you will remain a faithful and true disciple of Jesus Christ. Amen. Congratulations, buddy. Tyler James Meek. May the Holy Spirit work within him that having been born of water and of your Holy Spirit, that he will remain a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. Amen. Congratulations, Ty. Good to see you. Taylor Marie Morgan. May the Holy Spirit move deeply within you that having been born of water in the presence of the Spirit, that you will remain a faithful follower of Jesus Christ. Amen. Congratulations. Adam Spencer Paramore. May the Holy Spirit move mightily within this young man. That having been born of water and the power of your spirit, that he will remain a faithful disciple of you. Amen. Thank you, buddy. Good to see you. <laughs> Madison Ann Schmidt. May the Holy Spirit move mightily in your life that having been born of water in the presence of the Spirit that you will remain a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. Amen. Congratulations, Manny. Anna May Summers. May the Holy Spirit move mightily in your life that having been born of water and the presence of the Spirit, that you remain a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. Amen. Congratulations, people.
Dominic Anthony Treganza. May the Holy Spirit move mightily in your life that having been born of water and of the Spirit, that you will remain a faithful and true disciple of Jesus Christ. Amen. Aaron Nicole Walker. May the Holy Spirit work in your life that having been born of water and the presence of this very Spirit, that you will remain faithful and true to Jesus Christ. Amen. Congratulations. Clayton Rayley Washington. May the Holy Spirit just move mightily in this young man's life, that having been born of water and the presence of the Spirit, that he will remain a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. Amen. Benjamin Mitchell Westfall. May the Holy Spirit move deeply in your life that having been born of this water and surrounded by your spirit, that he will remain a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. Amen. Congratulations. Alicia J. Yakinum. May the Holy Spirit move deeply in your life, that having been born of water and the presence of your spirit, that you will remain a faithful and true disciple of Jesus Christ. Amen. Congratulations, sweetie. Buddy Chad. Okay. Chad. A. Yakino. May the Holy Spirit move mightily in your life that having been born of water and of the Spirit, that you will continue to remain a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. Amen. All right. Very good. Congratulations, buddy. Yeah. Okay. Pop the screen. Okay, class, we're almost done. You have made your commitments. Uh, well, you turn away from sin. You've made your commitment to turn towards Jesus. Uh, and you've been confirmed in that particular faith. We've asked the Holy Spirit to empower you and strengthen you. Uh, we've talked about your beliefs. Now we're going to talk about your belonging to this assortment of individuals and how you support being part of this as a full member of uh, Church of the Lake. So, last two questions. Um, as members of Christ Universal Church, will you be loyal to the United Methodist Church? Will you do all in your power to strengthen its ministries? If so, will all of you say, I will? I will. Good. And finally, as members of this congregation at Church of the Lakes, will you faithfully participate in its ministries by your prayers, by your presence, by your gifts, by your service, and by your witness. If so, would you say, I will? I will. All right. Congregation, now it's your turn. Uh, they have made their vows, but you're part of this journey for all of them. And so, members of the household of God, I commend you these young men and women to your love and your care. Do all in your power to increase their faith, confirm them in hope, and perfect them in love. Will you respond by saying... We give thanks for all that God has already given you, and we welcome you in Christian love. As members together with you in the body of Christ, and in this congregation of the United Methodist Church, we welcome you in the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Amen.
and our lives, that in everything God may be glorified through Jesus Christ. We're going to have a nice reception planned for you over in our activity center. We've got uh, some cake and some punch, and we want all of you to have that opportunity to greet and congratulate these young people on what I think is the most significant decision that they will ever make, uh, their connection to their Savior and, and to their Lord. I would invite all of you uh, to help us close the service by standing and singing uh, hymn number, uh, the page number, uh, as I get to it quickly, is, please stand, 399, thank you, 399, please stand and join in singing 399. Again, just a reminder that uh, after our service, uh, we'll have somebody back in our prayer chapel located underneath the balcony. Something's come up in your life this week, just like a word of encouragement, uh, there'll be somebody back there to pray with you. Uh, we also uh, are heading out to our activity center right down at the very end. We've got some cake, we've got some punch, some coffee. But most of all, what is really cool, I do hope you take a moment, our, our young people put together, we ask them to do this every year, put together a faith expression project. Sometimes it's a video, sometimes it's a, a picture, uh, sometimes they make uh, something with their hands. And uh, we've got many of those on display. And we hope you stop by and see what remarkable things God is doing uh, in these eighth graders' lives. If you'll now receive this blessing, this benediction, as we get ready to head to the reception. Uh, Lord, I just ask that you will empower these young people. That as they've left this sanctuary, they realize that uh, they're going out into a world where they can make a difference and help all of us to go into our own homes, our own schools, our own community to shine Christ's light for all. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.